Welcome to Empires Explained, a channel dedicated to uncovering the mysteries behind the rise and fall of the greatest empires in human history. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell for fascinating videos every Wednesday. The stage is set in the year 305 BC, a pivotal moment in the ancient world. In the heart of the Mediterranean, the sprawling Ptolemaic Empire, born from the conquests of Alexander the Great, emerges as a dominant force. With its epicenter in the majestic city of Alexandria, where the Nile River meets the Mediterranean Sea, this empire stands as a testament to the legacy of the Macedonian conqueror. At its zenith, the Ptolemaic Empire commands a vast realm stretching from the fertile Nile Delta to the arid expanses of the Egyptian hinterlands. The legacy of the Ptolemaic dynasty descended from one of Alexander's trusted generals, Ptolemy I Sota, weaves a tale of political cunning, cultural richness, and maritime prowess. In this video, we delve into the court intrigues and the strategic maneuvers that sustained the Ptolemaic grip on power. How did these rulers navigate the complex landscape of Egyptian traditions and Hellenistic aspirations? What cultural and intellectual achievements marked their reign? And how did they contribute to the broader tapestry of ancient history? Join us as we unravel the enigmatic saga of the Ptolemaic Empire exploring its ascendancy, the challenges it faced, and the echoes of its influence that resonate through the pantheon of history. Formation After Alexander's demise in Babylon in 323 BC, a power struggle ensued among his generals. Initially, Perdiccas assumed control of the empire as regent for Alexander's half-brother Aridaeus, later known as Philip III of Macedon. Subsequently, he served as regent for both Philip and the infant son of Alexander, Alexander IV of Macedon, who had not yet been born at the time of his father's death. Perdiccas appointed Ptolemy, a close companion of Alexander, as the satrap of Egypt. From 323 BC, Ptolemy governed Egypt in the name of the joint kings, Philip and Alexander. However, as Alexander the Great's empire disintegrated, Ptolemy gradually asserted his independent rule. In 321 BC, Ptolemy successfully defended Egypt against Perdiccas' invasion and solidified his position in Egypt and neighboring regions during the wars of the Diadochi. In 305 BC, Ptolemy assumed the titles of Basilius and Pharaoh, establishing the Ptolemaic dynasty that would govern Egypt for nearly three centuries. Throughout the dynasty, male rulers adopted the name Ptolemy, while princesses and female rulers favored names such as Cleopatra, Arsinoe, and Berenice. The Ptolemies embraced the Egyptian custom of marrying their sisters, often ruling jointly with their royal spouses. This practice created a complex web of familial relationships, leading to incestuous politics. In the early years of Ptolemaic rule, the rulers respected Egyptian religion and customs, constructing splendid temples for the Egyptian gods and adopting the ceremonial practices of the ancient pharaohs. Ptolemy I Sota showed regard for the Egyptian people and acknowledged the significance of their religious traditions. During the reigns of Ptolemies II and III, numerous Greek veterans received land grants, and Greek colonies and garrisons were established, contributing to the gradual Hellenization of the country. While Upper Egypt experienced less impact, Greek influence spread over the centuries, resulting in a sizable Greco-Egyptian educated class through intermarriage. Despite this, Greeks retained a privileged minority status in Ptolemaic Egypt, living under Greek law, receiving a Greek education, facing trials in Greek courts, and being citizens of Greek cities. The Rule of Ptolemy I Following Alexander's demise in 323 BC, Ptolemy is reputed to have orchestrated the Babylonian settlement of the empire. The partition of Babylon saw him appointed as satrap of Egypt under nominal kings Philip III and the infant Alexander IV. The former satrap, Greek Cleomenes, continued as his deputy. Acting without authorization, Ptolemy swiftly moved 
to subjugate Cyrenaica. In Macedonia, it was customary for kings to assert their throne rights by burying their predecessor. To preempt Perdiccas, the imperial regent, from staking a claim this way, Ptolemy went to great lengths to acquire the body of Alexander the Great. Despite Alexander's wish to be buried in the temple of Zeus Ammon in the Siwa Oasis, his successors, including Perdiccas, sought to bury him in Macedon. In late 322 BC, Ptolemy captured Alexander's body in Syria on its way to Macedon. He brought the remains to Egypt, initially interring them at Memphis before relocating them to Alexandria, where a tomb was constructed. Subsequently, Ptolemy openly allied with the coalition against Perdiccas, who suspected Ptolemy of vying for the throne. Ptolemy executed Cleomenes for spying on behalf of Perdiccas, removing a key check on his authority. In 321 BC, Perdiccas attempted to invade Egypt and fell at the hands of his own men. Ptolemy's defense of the Nile ended in disaster for Perdiccas, leading to the loss of 2,000 men and a fatal blow to Perdiccas' reputation. Ptolemy declined the regency offered in place of Perdiccas, remaining consistent in his pursuit of a secure power base without risking all for Alexander's succession. In the ensuing Diadochi Wars, Ptolemy prioritized securing Egypt and extending control over outlying areas, including Cyrenaica, Cyprus, and Syria, which encompassed the province of Judea. His first occupation of Syria occurred in 318 BC, establishing a protectorate over Cyprus. In 315 BC, Ptolemy joined a coalition against Antigonus I's expansionist ambitions, evacuating Syria at the outbreak of war. He fought and reconquered Cyprus in 313 BC, crushing a revolt in Cyrene the same year. In 312 BC, Ptolemy and the fugitive satrap Seleucus invaded Syria, defeating Demetrius I in the Battle of Gaza. After occupying Syria, Ptolemy evacuated it when Antigonus entered forcefully. A peace was concluded in 311 BC, and soon after, the 13-year-old king, Alexander IV, was murdered in Macedonia. Ptolemy personally commanded a fleet in 309 BC, detaching coastal towns from Antigonus and seizing Corinth, Sicyon, and Megara in Greece. In 306 BC, a fleet under Demetrius attacked Cyprus, resulting in Ptolemy's complete loss of the island. In response to Antigonus and Demetrius assuming the title of king, Ptolemy, along with Cassander, Lysimachus, and Seleucus I Nicator, did the same. In 306 BC, Antigonus tried to invade Egypt, but Ptolemy successfully held the frontier. Ptolemy provided assistance to Rhodes when besieged by Demetrius, earning divine honors from the Rhodians. Joining the coalition against Antigonus in 302 BC, Ptolemy invaded Syria a third time, evacuating upon hearing of Antigonus's victory. However, when news arrived of Antigonus's defeat and death at the Battle of Ipsus in 301 BC, Ptolemy occupied Syria once again. The coalition assigned all of Syria to Seleucus, viewing Ptolemy's previous evacuation as desertion. This led to a century of recurring warfare over the ownership of southern Syria between the Seleucid and Ptolemaic dynasties. Ptolemy minimized involvement in Asia Minor and Greece rivalries, losing his holdings in Greece, but reconquering Cyprus in 294 BC. Cyrenaica was finally subjugated in about 300 BC and placed under his stepson, Magus. Ptolemy II Philadelphus. Ptolemy II, born in 309 BC on the island of Kos, during his father's fourth Diadoc war invasion, was the son of Ptolemy I and Berenice I. Ptolemy II's numerous half-siblings included Ptolemy Karaunos and Meleager, who became kings of Macedonia from his father's previous marriage to Eurydice. From his mother Berenice's first marriage to Philip, he had siblings, Magus of Cyrene and Antigone, wife of Pyrrhus of Epirus. At birth, Ptolemy II's older half-brother Ptolemy Karanos was the heir presumptive. A succession struggle ensued, leading to Karanos's departure from Egypt around 287 BC. 
On March 28, 284 BC, Ptolemy I declared Ptolemy II king, formally elevating him to co-regent. Fallout from the succession conflict persisted after Ptolemy's accession, resulting in the execution of two brothers, likely full brothers, of Karaunos in 281 BC. Karaunos sought refuge with Lysimachus, who ruled Thrace and Western Asia Minor. Lysimachus supported Ptolemy's coup, sealed by marrying his daughter Arsinoe I to him. Conflict within Lysimachus's kingdom led to Agathocles' execution and the collapse of the kingdom in 281 BC. Around 279 BC, Arsinoe II returned to Egypt, clashing with sister-in-law Arsinoe I. After Arsinoe's charge of conspiracy in 275 BC, Ptolemy married older sister Arsinoe II around 273 BC, shocking the Greeks with sibling marriage, a tradition among Egyptian pharaohs. The marriage may not have been consummated, and Theocritus defended it by comparing it to the gods Zeus and Hera. Most subsequent Ptolemaic monarchs followed this model. Children of Arsinoe I, including future Ptolemy III, were seemingly excluded from succession after their mother's fall. Ptolemy II adopted Arsinoe II's son by Lysimachus, also named Ptolemy, as heir, promoting him to co-regent in 267 BC after Arsinoe II's death. He retained that position until his rebellion in 259 BC. Ptolemy II legitimized Arsinoe I's children, posthumously adopted by Arsinoe II around the rebellion. Ptolemy expanded his realm at Seleucid expense after the Battle of Ipsos in 301 BC. Acquisitions from epigraphic sources included Samos, Miletus, Caria, Lycia, Pamphylia, and perhaps Cilicia. Antiochus I acquiesced in 279 BC, but prepared for a rematch. Pursuing ties with Ptolemy II's half-brother Magus, Antiochus married his daughter Apama to Magus. Around 275 BC, Magus invaded Egypt, but he turned back when Libyan nomads attacked Cyrene. Ptolemy's forces faced challenges, including Gauls mutinying after hiring. Marooned on a deserted island in the Nile, they perished. Ptolemy's victory was celebrated grandly, likened to other kings facing Gallic invasions. Around this time, Ptolemy considered military action in pre-Islamic Arabia, sending Ariston to reconnoiter the western coast of Arabia. Ptolemy clashed with Nubia over the Triacontoscoinos along the Nile. Around 275 BC, Ptolemaic forces invaded Nubia, annexing the northern 12 miles as the Dodecascoinos. Celebrated publicly, it included the rich gold mines at Wadi Alaki, where Ptolemy founded Berenice Pancrisis and instituted large-scale mining, contributing to the empire's prosperity and power in the 3rd century BC. The First Syrian War, 241-271 BC. A decade into his reign, Ptolemy confronted the formidable Antiochus I, the Seleucid king determined to expand his empire's territories in Syria and Anatolia. Ptolemy, a resolute ruler and adept military strategist, had recently solidified the stability of the Egyptian court through his marriage to his astute sister, Arsinoe II of Egypt. This matrimonial alliance proved crucial in facilitating the success of Ptolemy's military campaign. The First Syrian War unfolded as a pivotal triumph for the Ptolemaic dynasty. Antiochus swiftly seized control of the Ptolemaic-held regions in coastal Syria and southern Anatolia in the initial stages of the conflict. Undeterred, Ptolemy orchestrated a brilliant counter-offensive, reclaiming these territories by 271 BC. This military success expanded Ptolemaic dominion, reaching as far as Caria and encompassing a significant portion of Cilicia. As Ptolemy directed his attention eastward, his half-brother Magus asserted the independence of his province, Cyrenaica. This independence endured until 250 BC, when it was reintegrated into the Ptolemaic kingdom. However, this reabsorption was not without consequence, 
sparking a series of intricate court intrigues, conflicts between the Ptolemaic and Seleucid realms, and ultimately culminating in the marriage of Theos and Berenice. The intricate web of events underscored the complex geopolitical landscape of the time and the far-reaching implications of Ptolemy's strategic prowess and diplomatic acumen. Colonization of the Red Sea Ptolemy embarked on a comprehensive revival of earlier Egyptian initiatives aimed at accessing the Red Sea. The historical context included Darius I's 6th century BC construction of a canal from the Nile near Bubastis to the Gulf of Suez, passing through Pithom, Lake Timsa, and the Bitter Lakes. However, by Ptolemy's era, this canal had succumbed to silting. In a monumental effort, he initiated the dredging and restoration of the canal in 270 BC, commemorated through the Pitom Stele. To capitalize on this endeavor, the city of Arsinoe was founded at the canal's mouth on the Gulf of Suez. Ptolemy's strategic vision extended beyond mere canal restoration. Two exploratory missions were dispatched along the east and west coasts of the Red Sea, venturing as far as the Babel Mandeb. The leaders of these missions meticulously established a chain of 270 harbor bases along the coasts, some of which burgeoned into pivotal commercial centers. Along the Egyptian coastline, the significance of Philotera, Myos Hormos, and Berenice Troglodytica surged as termini for caravan routes traversing the Egyptian desert. These ports played a vital role in facilitating the burgeoning Indian Ocean trade that unfolded over the ensuing three centuries. Venturing even further south, Ptolemais Theron, potentially located near modern Port Sudan, assumed a strategic role as a base for capturing elephants. The adults met their demise for ivory, while the young ones were captured and trained as war elephants. On the east coast of the Red Sea, pivotal settlements included Berenice and Ampoloni. These settlements strategically granted the Ptolemies access to the western terminus of caravan routes integral to the incense trade, managed by the Nabataeans, who evolved into close allies of the Ptolemaic Empire. Ptolemy's multifaceted efforts not only revitalized ancient waterways, but also established a maritime network that would significantly shape the economic and strategic landscape of the region for centuries to come. Cremonidian War 267-261 BC During the initial years of Ptolemy's rule, Egypt asserted its dominance as the foremost naval power in the eastern Mediterranean. The Ptolemaic sphere of influence stretched from the Cyclades to Samothrace in the northern Aegean, even venturing into the Black Sea to support Byzantium in a campaign. This expansive maritime policy unfolded without resistance, capitalizing on a prolonged civil war in Macedon that created a power vacuum in the northern Aegean. The vacuum faced a threat when Antigonus II solidified his rule as the king of Macedon in 272 BC. As Antigonus expanded his influence through mainland Greece, Ptolemy and Arsino strategically positioned themselves as defenders of Greek freedom against Macedonian aggression. Ptolemy cemented alliances with Athens and Sparta, the two most influential Greek cities. In 269 BC, Athenian politician Cremonides forged an additional alliance with Sparta. The ensuing war against Antigonus saw Ptolemaic Admiral Patroclus establishing a base on Chaos in 267 BC and sailing to Attica in 266 BC. The plan aimed to join forces with the Spartan army, isolating and expelling Antigonid garrisons at Sunion and Piraeus. However, the Spartan army failed to break through to Attica, leading to the plan's failure. In 265 quarters BC, Spartan King Arius I attempted to aid Athens, but faced defeat at the hands of Antigonus II. After a prolonged siege, Athens surrendered to Antigonus in 261 BC. Despite Patroclus's presence, Ptolemy seemed hesitant to fully engage in the conflict in mainland Greece, focusing instead 
on the Eastern Aegean. Ptolemaic naval forces, under the command of Ptolemy's nephew and co-regent Ptolemy, seized control of Ephesus and potentially Lesbos in 262 BC. The war and the Battle of Kos marked the decline of absolute Ptolemaic thalassocracy in the Aegean. The League of the Islanders, previously under Ptolemaic control, appears to have dissolved. Yet, Ptolemaic naval bases at Chaos, Methana, Thera, and Itanos endured until the late 3rd century BC, serving as crucial bastions of Ptolemaic sea power until 145 BC. This intricate geopolitical maneuvering underscores the nuanced role of Ptolemy in shaping the Mediterranean landscape. Second Syrian War, 260-253 BC. In approximately 260 BC, tensions erupted once again between Ptolemy and the Seleucid realm, now governed by Antiochus II. The core issue of this conflict revolved around the contested claims of the two monarchs over cities in Western Asia Minor, with a particular focus on Miletus and Ephesus. The spark for this war seemed to be the rebellion led by Ptolemy's co-regent, also named Ptolemy, who had been at the forefront of Ptolemaic naval forces against Antigonus. Seizing control of Ptolemaic territories in Western Asia Minor and the Aegean, the actions of the younger Ptolemy prompted Antiochus to declare war on Ptolemy, garnering additional support from the Rhodians. Between 259 and 255 BC, the Ptolemaic navy, under the command of Cremonides, suffered a setback in a sea battle at Ephesus. Subsequently, Antiochus established control over Ptolemaic cities in Ionia, including Ephesus, Miletus, and Samos. In 257 BC, Ptolemy personally invaded Syria, although the outcome of this military campaign remains undisclosed. By the conclusion of the war, Ptolemy had ceded sections of Pamphylia and Cilicia, retaining authority over Syrian territories south of the Eleutheros River. While uncertainties persist, there is a potential scenario where Antigonus was still engaged in hostilities with Ptolemy during this period, marked by his significant naval triumph at the Battle of Kos in 255 BC, potentially occurring within the context of the Second Syrian War. In 253 BC, Ptolemy initiated peace negotiations, agreeing to concede substantial portions of Asian Minor to Antiochus. The formalization of the peace settlement was marked by the marriage of Antiochus to Ptolemy's daughter Berenice in 252 BC, accompanied by considerable indemnity payments from Ptolemy to the Seleucids as part of the dowry. Following the resolution of the conflict, in July 253 BC, Ptolemy traveled to Memphis, where he demonstrated appreciation to his soldiers by distributing extensive plots of land reclaimed from Lake Muris in the Fayum, designating them as estates. This newly established region was named the Arsinoit, in honor of the long-deceased Arsinoe. Later reign and death, 252-246 BC. After the culmination of the Second Syrian War, Ptolemy redirected his strategic focus towards the Aegean and mainland Greece. Approximately in 250 BC, his military forces achieved a notable victory over Antigonus in a naval engagement at an unspecified location. Around the same period, Ptolemy found himself persuaded to provide substantial subsidies to the Achaean League by Aratus of Sicyon, the League's envoy. Though initially a coalition of minor city-states in the northwestern Peloponnese, the Achaean League, with Ptolemy's financial support, underwent a transformative expansion over the next four decades. Aratus orchestrated the League's growth to encompass almost the entire Peloponnese, thereby emerging as a formidable adversary to Antigonid influence in mainland Greece. Death. During the late 250 SBC, Ptolemy reinitiated negotiations with his brother Magus to secure a settlement. An agreement was reached stipulating that Ptolemy III, the designated heir of Ptolemy II, would marry Berenice. Magus's sole child. However, upon Magus's demise in 250 BC, Berenice's mother Apame 
disregarded the accord and instead invited Demetrius the Fair, an Antigonid prince, to Cyrene for Berenice's marriage. With Apame's assistance, Demetrius seized control of the city, only to be later assassinated by Berenice. Subsequently, Cyrene was governed by a republican administration led by Ecdelus and Demophanes until Berenice's marriage to Ptolemy III in 246 BC, following his ascension to the throne. Ptolemy II passed away on January 28, 246 BC, and his successor, Ptolemy III, assumed the throne without incident marking the transition of leadership within the Ptolemaic dynasty.